We thank God for the love. So much love is inside. We thank God for the love. Love the love, love the love. We thank God for the love. Amen. Welcome to Love Alive Ministries. Amen. 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 We got a new man before you. Amen. Amen. He is ready, so we're going to go in a different order. Right now, we're going to have our scripture by Brother Walter, and then we're going to have prayer by Deacon Chris. Amen. Amen. Let us know where you're coming from. Amen. Okay. This one is from John chapter 14. Yep. Pull your mask down. I go one through four. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. And whether I go, you know the way. Amen. 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 I will trust. up and see a day that we've never seen before. And Lord, thank you for protecting us through the night. And Lord, thank you for forgiving us for our sins, Heavenly Father. Bless the ones that's on their way to hear your word. And bless the preacher of the day to give your word, Heavenly Father. Bless all of us in this world today, Lord. Bless the homeless to stay warm, my Heavenly Father. And bless the hungry, Lord. Just thank you for your love and mercy, Heavenly Father. And just keep blessing us. And, and thank you, Lord, mm-hmm. for having us on our right frame of mind, uh, giving us our lamps to work with, Heavenly mm-hmm. Father. Just thank you so much in your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier. Glad to be in the service. 
that you pull out your phones mm -hmm. and text somebody, tweet somebody that's not here, and we greet you in the name of the Lord to the body of the Christ that is here. Mm -hmm. God bless you. It's time to greet one another. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for sharing your love, amen. It's tithes and offering time. We got two baskets over here to my left. Bring your tithes and offering to the basket, amen. And if you need to give electronically, we have Give Life, we have Cash App, we have a website that you can go on and give, and you can always USPS us. You can mail it in. We got more.
let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come again to say thank you and to praise your holy name. Thank you, O oh God, our Father, for blessing us to see another beautiful day that you have created. O oh Lord, we ask you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let the collection that was collected this morning be used for the upkeep of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to have the men come back with an A selection, and then we'll be coming forward with the word. God bless you. I should have sang, I'm running for my life. <laughs> this morning, I felt like I needed to be in a couple of places at one time. <laughs> amen, amen. God is good, amen. And we thank him 
for all that he has done. Amen. Amen. I hear just a little ring, Devin. I thank him for what he has done. All right, let's go into Luke. Luke chapter 22, verse 60 and 61. We thank Brother Walter for reading the scripture. Amen. Amen. New things, new things, new things. Amen. We thank him. We thank the men. And we thank you. Amen. We thank you. We thank the Lord for blessing Reverend Dukes on Friday night. Or, Amen. I don't know if you saw that, Brother Kelvin. Well, she has a new name now. I will tell you after church. Amen. Amen. You thought I had a name. Amen. She got a new name. Amen. And we're looking at I, I see you, brother. We're looking at Luke chapter 22, verse 60 and 61. Thank you, because somebody else didn't get it. Brother Walter was waving me down like he was an air traffic controller. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Walter. Amen. <laughs> Luke 22, 60 and 61. And it reads, and Peter said, man... I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you to say thank you. We thank you for your word, for your word is God. Oh, we thank you that you loved us enough that you left the Holy Spirit to teach us all things. Now, Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit take the role of the preacher and give a word that can be applied in everyone's life. We thank you, Father, for all things. It is in Jesus' name who is our Savior, who is our King, who will be coming back soon. It is in his name that we pray and we say, Amen. 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 Yes, this is the Sunday Reverend Duke should be preaching. Let's get that out the way. Amen. I'm just helping out. Amen. 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 But, but just to make y'all feel comfortable, I won't be before you long. Amen. I, I won't. Amen. For a topic, I'm going to use the word turnaround. The turnaround. Amen. The turnaround. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had the privilege of being lost and admitting it. And it was clear that I was lost even before I admitted it. Amen. And I had to get to a point where I could turn around because the direction I was going down was not the correct direction. And it was apparent, apparent by the way I was driving five miles per hour that I did not know where I was going. You know, when you lost, you drive slow, like you're looking for somebody to jump out and say, yeah, keep going or turn around. Amen. But I knew I was lost. But then I got this thing called the GPS. Amen. Boy, that thing worked good. Let me tell you. That lady gave me good directions. And I don't get lost much anymore. But there are times when I will ignore the GPS. Even when I don't know where I'm going, I will ignore the GPS. See, the directions I've been given just didn't sound right to me, so I would ignore the GPS. You know, I might get a direction that would say, turn left, turn right, turn right, and turn right. And I would say, wait a minute, I'm making a circle. What is this? So I would do something else. And you know what I found out? 
there was a reason I was making a circle because I got lost when I went to do something else. Amen. There was either a detour, something was going on that I couldn't go die wreck. But I thank God for the space that he allows us to turn around. Amen. He allows us space to turn around. That means for us to get it right with him. Here we have Peter. Peter is that great disciple who told Jesus who he was. He said, you are the Christ. It was Peter who Jesus took on a fishing trip late at night and said, cash your net down. And Peter said, come on now, it's too late to be fishing. But because you said it, I'm going to do it. And he did it. And the net began to fill up, began to break, full of fish. Peter said, oh, I'm not worthy to be around you. Obviously, you got to be some sort of holy man. I'm of unclean lips. I'm not worthy to be around you. It was Peter who said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you. And Peter got out of the boat after being bid it to come and walk on the water. It is this very same Peter that Christ said to him, you will deny me three times before the cock crows after I am apprehended. I love that we can turn around and get it right, but I really want to focus on what causes us to go in the wrong direction, okay? What prevents us from following through as guided to make us have to turn around? I think if we could understand that, we would be moving a lot quicker. We wouldn't have to worry about turning around as much if we knew what it was that was causing us to choose wrong. Well, I can see it's right there. That's what somebody said. I can see it's right there. I got it from here. And we waving off the Lord. I got it from here. I can see it. It's right in front of me. I can see it. I don't need your help anymore. I'm good from here. I'm good from here. But we have to learn how to see what we are seeing. Now that sounds strange to say to see what we are seeing. But see, there was a group of people named the Israelites who were brought to a land called the Promised Land. It was called the Promised Land because it was promised to them. And the land was rich with resources. But these people, instead of following through, they became distracted. See, they sent out 12 spies to go into the land, and they saw that the land was good, but they also saw that the land was populated. So there was going to have to be a takeover. And what they got distracted on was the takeover over what was promised. And the promise cannot fail. It has to come through. So when they looked at the land, 10 of them said, oh, it's not a good land. They're giants. They make us look like ants. Two of them said, I see what I'm seeing. And what I'm seeing is the promised land, and it's rich. We need to run to it. Two got rid of their natural eyes. Two used their spiritual eyes, and they could C. Ten used their natural eyes and fell into carnality, into their own minds. They could see the promised land. It was right there. They thought they had it, but they didn't have it. Why? What was wrong with these people? Same thing wrong with us. Are you willing to be shepherd? Are you willing to be shepherd? Are you willing to be led? Or do we have a bunch of 
leaders and no followers. Are you willing to be led? Another reason we get off track is because we really don't know the way. We, we really don't know the way. I, I thought I knew Jesus. I thought you knew Jesus. But we really don't know him. Amen. As much as we thought we knew him, we don't. Somebody said, I've been going to church for so many years. But his presence was there. But I did not take the opportunity to meet him for myself. So although I was doing those things that looked right, I never got to know him. Amen? I never got to know him as the partner of my sin. I never got to know him as my savior who saved me from all things. I never got to know him. His ways are foreign to me. And because they're foreign to me, I go back to my carnal ways. I go back to those things. When in doubt, I got to get the out. Dot, 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 out. When in doubt, I got to get out. Amen? I got to get out. Because that's what I'm used to doing. I'm used to running. I'm not used to sticking around. I, I'm, I'm not used to having problems. I, I, I thought when I came to the Lord, all my problems were going to go away. So I, I got to get out. Well, you didn't get to know him. You really didn't get to know him. Now, John 10, 10 through 11, we got some good word. And Jesus said this to us, not just to his disciples, but to us. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And you say, well, that's Jesus talking about himself. Well, no, he's telling you that the thief is going to be coming after you too. But that's why Jesus came, so that you don't have to worry about that. And what he said was that you got to give it all, not partly. You got to give it all up if you want to avoid that thief. Give it all. Give it all. How much you got to give? You got to give your life to gain your life. When you try to keep your life, you will lose your life. Give it all, give it all, give it all. Don't lose your life. Give it all up. Another reason that we have when we're going, making that wrong decision is that we really don't want to go. We don't want to go. Oh, I won't be saved. No, you don't. I want to be born again. No, you don't. I want to be righteous. Not really. I want to be all that the Lord wants me to be. Uh, not really. So what do we do? We jump off the path to righteousness because of the first opposition we meet. The first opposition we meet causes us to jump off that path of righteousness. Too many problems in this lifestyle? I got to get off. Now let me tell you what we're doing because some of y'all can't relate to that. I understand. You know what that's equivalent to? If I told you you're going to take a trip and you're going to go to New York and when you get to the first toll I know I shouldn't have went on this trip. Every time you tell me to do something, there's a problem. Now I got to pay some money to get through this toll. And as you pull up, it says paid. And you say, oh, I guess I'll keep going. Then you get to the next toll. And it's a little bit more. Because you know these problems in our life that we have, they escalate as we get closer to the Lord. Amen? 
It's called building faith muscles. Amen. And when we get to that next toll, we say, I know I shouldn't have went on this trip. I'm pulling over. Every time I ride this road, there's a cost to pay. I don't want to be on this road no more. I'm getting off the road. Soon as I get to this toll, and when you get to the toll, it says, pay. You say, oh. So the third time you come up the road and you hit a toll, and you would think by now, you would say, I'm looking for the paid sign. But you know what we do? I'm tired of being on this road. Every time I get on this road, I got to pay money. We repeat those things that we are comfortable and familiar with. Amen? Even after the Lord has said, I got you. I'm proving myself. Let me show you. We don't want to go. See, we didn't measure the cost of discipleship. We really didn't. We just didn't see what it cost to be a disciple. What it meant was that your way has to be gone totally. And you have to accept his way. You can't be doing this thing partly and pretending to get blessed. Because <laughs> you're not really getting blessed. You're just pretending so that you can have something to say too. But you can't do that. You've got to be all in. All in. So listen to what Jesus told us. He said, behold, the hour cometh. Yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered. Every man to his own and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What's he saying? When you come up to that toll, I already paid it for you. I just need you to keep going through. Don't stop. Stay on the road. Keep moving. I'm glad that when Jesus was resurrected, he had Peter on his mind. He specifically said, tell my disciples, and Peter. Now, why did he call out Peter? Was it because Peter was no longer his disciple? No. That's not why he called him out by name. He called him out by name because he loved him and he knew that Peter was suffering on the inside because what he had done. He had denied the Christ. And he said, tell Peter to come. Tell him I called him by name. Because I want to let him know that I can reset him. See, Peter had the want to's. He just didn't have the how to's. So Christ said, I want to show you, Peter, that you got the want to's. Your attitude is right. But the how to's, you got to learn of me and my ways. So let me reset you. Tell Peter to come. Tell Peter to come. You know, I'm, I'm big on drones now. That's a hobby I have. And I'm done. I'm done. So that's why I'm talking about drones. I'm done. But I want you to understand, on the drone, there is a button on the remote called RTH. And you know what the RTH button is? Return to home. So as that drone is flying, if I lose sight of it, I can hit a button, and it will come not around the way. It will rise up. Listen to that. It will rise up to the height that I set, and it will fly straight to me. It don't even ask any questions. It will come back to me. And did you know that if the drone begins to run out of power, 
it'll get a message. You're running low on power. You need to come back home. And the drone will go up. No choice. Come straight back to me. If the drone has gone too far, and it's like, you're not supposed to be that far. You don't have enough power to make it home. It'll come up. Return to home. And that drone will rise up to the height that was set for it. Amen. And it will come directly back to where it started. The Lord has set us up. He has set us up that we can soar and we can live an abundant life. But if you get too far out in front, the Lord can hit your button and say, you need to return to home. If you look like you getting lost, he can hit your button and say, return to home. If it looks like you don't have enough power, he can hit your button and say, return to home. And you can start over again. But there's something else that can happen that I learned. That if you're not synced up right, the drone doesn't know where to come. The drone has to be synced to know where home is. Amen. If it goes out without being synced and it gets in trouble, the drone don't know how to come back to home. Then I got to go look for the drone. But because I love the drone, I will go look for the drone. Amen. I will find the drone. Ain't that right, Digging Snowden? I will find that drone. But don't you know the Lord loves you so much, even more, that he'll come out and look for you when you get out of sync and it looks like you flying away, he will come and get you. For after all, let me tell you, he's not lost. You got lost. And when you lost, you know what you need? You need some help. You need somebody to help you because you don't know where you're going. I don't understand why it is that we don't understand that when we are lost, we need help being found that we need to ask the Savior to help us. And we are lost. Why we just keep driving down the road and we don't know where we're going? We keep living our life endlessly like it's going to change and we don't know what we're doing. And the Lord is right there, ready for us. It gets so bad we run out of gas and he had to go come and get us. Return to home. Return to home. How do we get that turnaround going? Well, you got to repent. You got to repent. And you know what happens when you repent? You get that message. Recalculating. 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 That's what your GPS said, right? Recalculating. That's called now you're ready to obey. Recalculating. We have to be recalculated to go in the right direction. God loves us so much that he said, even if you step off the path, I got a turnaround spot for you. I love you so much that if I have to return you home, I'll do it. I love you so much that I'll come out and get you if you don't return to home. There's only one way that you can be lost. And that way is if you choose to be lost because he didn't give us failure he gave us completeness he completed the mission what did he say in the word John 16 32 33 be of good cheer why because I have overcome the world well if he overcame it well I'm struggling he told me he left his peace for me why can't I overcome you can he has you have you just got to accept it you have just got to accept it the turnaround the turnaround. Somebody said, look, you should have preached that about five years ago. I've been traveling down the wrong road. Well, you can turn around today. You can stop. Pull over. 
Stop. That's what you do when you lost. Stop. Don't keep moving. Stop. Because you know what happens when you get lost, you get agitated. No, I, I know where I'm going. Don't ask me no questions. Just a little bit further. Why you keep asking me? Act like a child. You know, you start attacking. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> Daddy, are we lost? I, no, son. We're just taking a roundabout way. No, we lost. We lost, amen? But you can come back. You can come back. You can pull over. And the Savior will come. And the only way that he won't come is if you don't ask him. When we talk about Brother James, if you deny that the Holy Spirit is God, if you deny the power of the Holy Spirit and who he is, you're saying, I don't want to be found. I just want to stay lost. But otherwise, you got a choice, and you can be found. Just turn around. Turn around. Repent. Be obedient. Obey. Remember, it's not always what we see with these, but what we see with this. It'll look one way. There is a way, right? It'll look right to us, but the end is destruction. You've got to accept him and his terms. Why? Because he not only knows the way, he is the way. You can't get there without accepting him as the way. Come to Jesus now. Come to him. Return to home. Don't you know if he chose you, he can lead you. He just needs you to be willing and obedient. Let your will be done and down and dead. Done, down, dead. That's what you want with your will. And you need to take on his will and live and live and live. If you do not know Jesus, as your personal Savior, and you have not accepted him as the Christ, and you have not confessed, come to Jesus now. Come to Jesus right now. Y'all going to make me put up a sign. Come to Jesus right now. Now is the time. Amen. Sign going to say cut it off. Unless you're a doctor. If you're a doctor, leave it on. But cut it off. Come to Jesus right now. He loves you. He's ready for you. You can turn around. He's ready to lead you. But will you be obedient to him? Let me tell you how good he is, that when he calls for you to come home, once you acknowledge him and you become obedient to him, he can cancel for you coming home and say, you ready to go, keep going. I don't need to come all the way home. No, I got you. I got you now. You're looking right at me. I can turn you around and fly some more. I'm going to watch your power level, though. I'm going to watch your energy. Because sometimes you don't step up until all the power. So I got to watch your power level, but you can continue. Turn around. Now is the time. Come to Jesus right now. As we stand up all over the building, and if you're at a home watching on Facebook, now is the time that you can come to the Lord. You can come to him anytime, but this is where we say the doors of the church are open. Amen. We offer we offer Jesus to all sinners. Who sinner? Anybody living unrighteously who has not accepted him as your personal savior, you are in sin. Come to Jesus right now. Now is the time. Come to him. Come to him. He loves you. He loves you. Come to him right now.
when you come to him, you got to believe that you can be forgiven. And you got to accept his forgiveness. And you've got to live. Y'all know what Peter did after he came to him? Peter preached a sermon in an upper room. Turned the world upside down as the Holy Spirit came rushing in. And what did Peter preach? Nothing of his own. Lord Jesus Christ, crucified, resurrected, the king coming back again. From the Father, preached just what he was told and what he saw. Didn't add to it, didn't subtract. And the Holy Spirit rushed in and did the rest. You can come to Jesus right now. Now is the time if you say, well, I've accepted him as my personal savior I need a church home. You can get a church home right now. You come to Love Alive Ministries. Whether you come via Facebook or come in person, you can come. Come. Come now. Worst thing to happen is to have you come to the sanctuary or come on Facebook and you was just in the room, but you never got to know Jesus. You said, I was near him, but I never reached out to him. I watched him with other people, but I never thought that could be me. It couldn't be you. You just got to come now. You don't have to be worried about what people will say or how people may look. You just need to meet Jesus for yourself. You need to be saved. You don't have to worry about judging other people. You just worry about yourself. Amen? Come to him now while you can. He loves you. He's all about turnarounds. He will allow you to turn around. But he said it's so much easier when you just follow me. We can move so much quicker. But if you got to be turned around, I love you enough to turn you around. Come on to Jesus while you can. Is there one? There are so many things we say that we're going to do when we get to heaven. So many things we want to ask or questions of the Lord on why certain things happen. I used to say that myself. But now, I just say, I'm just going to tell him thank you. Thank you. I ain't got nothing else to say. Well, you got any questions? Nope. Don't matter now. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. You did what you said you was going to do. You brought me over. Thank you. Do I need to wipe away any tears? Nope. Thank you. I'm ready to laugh and enjoy life. I was practicing. Now I'm ready to laugh up here for real. Thank you. Let me enjoy. But you got to come to him. You got to meet him for yourself. Can't be beside him, can't be behind him, can't be in front of him. You've got to come to him to get that personal relationship and let him come to you. Nothing else will do. Oh, yes, there'll be a surprise of the people who are in heaven and those who are not. Amen. But you just want to make sure that you are there. So I want you to work now. You work now to make sure that you are there. So if there's any doubt in your mind now, is the time. If you said, hey, I, I know I won't be there. I want to be saved right now. I confess the Lord Jesus Christ and I believe in my heart that the Father raised him from the dead and that he came as an unbegotten. He was brought into being. You too can be saved right now. Right now. You don't need to be in a church walking down an aisle. You can be saved right where you are because it is with your heart and you confessed so come on come on home right now let us pray father we thank you we thank you for what you have done we thank you for who you are we thank you for your love now father we thank you for your peace that far exceeds our understanding we thank you for your word that we too can turn around and if we are obedient to you we can move so much faster but if not 
you can return us to home. We thank you, Father, for loving us so. Now, Father, bless those who have accepted you as their personal Savior today on social media. Bless them with a closer walk. Bless them to understand that in accepting you, it doesn't mean that they will be without problems. After all, you told us the world would hate us, but what it means is that they can overcome it because you have already overcome, so we can be of good cheer as we face our problems. So we thank you, Father, for what you are doing. We ask that you bless the sick part of Love Alive Ministries, the members who are sick, bless those who are shut in. We ask that you will bless everyone, Father, bless those who are here. Bless those who can stand it with a financial blessing. But those that can't stand it, hold it back because I don't want them to gain the world and lose their soul. But those that can stand it, bless them. Bless them with a financial blessing, Father. Prosper them even the more as they submit to you. For there can be no prospering without submittal. Allow them to submit to you. We thank you, Father. I'm in agreement with them. If they're willing, I agree with them. I thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Son. We thank you for your love. Now may the grace and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed.